So I've had some requests for a basic loaf bread recipe and for my long-term subscribers you know that I like to use a bread machine for my bread making. As a matter of fact I have two bread machines and I usually run them at the same time when it's my bread making day. It's a day when um, I don't have a lot of running around to do and I just kind of make my rolls on that day along with loaf bread. So I like to use a bread man bread machine and I'll leave a link below the video if you would like to see the one that I use. Now here are the ingredients for the basic loaf bread and in this recipe I use three cups of flour and I'll just give you a little background information. I used to use an all-purpose flour and that was because the only flour I could really find that was organic was all-purpose. The bread flour was not and for me when I feed my family something um, on a regular basis. I do like to kind of keep it clean and free of preservatives and food colorings and so that includes my bread along with eggs, milk, and then I also try to use filtered water. So those four things I'm kind of picky about. But recently my local grocery store started to carry an organic um, bread flour so that's what I'm using now but I, the all-purpose flour worked fine for me for many years so um, you know, I think it'll be fine. Now, I'm also going to use a little bit of wheat berries. I'm going to grind some wheat berries for a whole wheat flour, uh, but that's your option. Okay, now I'll go ahead and start by preparing my wheat berries, and I will leave a link here if you'd like to learn more about wheat berries and how I grind them and store them. Now, this video was taken several years ago, and since the making of that video, I now have a a piece of equipment that I can actually grind my berries right before I use them. In that video I have a hand uh, wheat grinder and so um, there's a little difference there but right now I'm just going to use my it's a Vitamix blender and it grinds berries perfectly fine. So I'll go ahead and clean through my berries. I want to make sure there's not any little small pebbles or discolored wheat berries and I'll give those a good grind. <music> And I'll go ahead and strain my flour as well and now I want to put actually on the stove before I forget about it my water and for bread machines you need to have the water between the temperatures of about 80 and 90 because the bread machine yeast is formulated quite a bit different than active dry yeast so your water temperature should not be as hot as you would have it for just uh, active dry yeast, okay? Okay, so now while that's on the stove, I'm going to go ahead and add my sugar and my salt. And I wanna go ahead and test the temperature. And there it is, it's between about 80 and 90 degrees. I'm not real picky about the temperature. I like it to be actually a little bit more on the warmer side, closer to 100 degrees. I found that that works out pretty good for me. Uh, normally though, I just do a pinky test. I just stick my pinky right in the water and test it. And I have a pretty good idea if it's the temperature because I make it all the time. But if you're just starting out making your bread, you may want to actually take the temperature. That's why I'm showing you that, okay? So we'll go ahead and add our water to the bread pan along with our oil and of course the flour. Now in the top I'm going to make a little indentation there and this is where I will put my bread machine yeast. Right on top. We'll put it in the uh, bread machine and then I'm going to set this uh, for three hours. This will be a pound and a half loaf and so about 20 minutes into it I like to kind of scrape the sides down and make sure everything is getting incorporated into the dough. And after three hours it's ready. So when I first started making bread, I lived in Florida, and I had to kind of change my recipe a little bit when I moved to North Carolina because we have different water here, and I'm at a different elevation, and of course, a lot of these things will affect your bread making, okay? So if your bread does not come out exactly the way you expected it to begin with, uh, the next time that you make it, maybe give it another tablespoon of oil or another tablespoon of water and make a record of what you did until you get the results that you like. It might not just be perfect the first time that you make your bread, but I hope it is. <laughs> and so I usually leave this out for about five minutes and then I'll remove it from the pan 
Now one step I didn't show you was that sometimes when you're making your bread um, you can pull the dough out after it's finished kneading and before it starts to rise and then pull the paddle out of the bottom of your pan um, and that will prevent the paddle from sticking inside your bread. Okay, my paddle actually removed nice and clean on this one. This is a new paddle for me. I kind of change those out about once a year. Um, but if your sticks in there, you'll know what I mean. If you have a bread machine, you can just pull it out with some needle nose pliers or some tweezers or something like that so you don't really tear up your bread too bad. Or like I said, remove the paddle early in the bread making and that way the paddle, um, you know, it's done its job by the time you've removed it and you won't have a problem with a paddle sticking in your bread. <laughs> so there we have it. So once it's cooled off for about an hour or so, I'll go ahead and put it in a plastic twist tie bag and then we'll go ahead and enjoy it for a couple of days. I like to use a carving knife to cut my bread or some kind of serrated knife. And then with the leftovers, especially with the heels of the bread, I will process those in a little food chopper and put them in a Ziploc bag in my freezer for breadcrumbs for all kinds of things later. And then I also like to use uh, the stale pieces of bread for French toast. We like French toast and it really is not very complicated. It can, you know, I like to make it for my kids in the morning before they head off to school. So it's a nice way to use up that bread. I try not to waste anything. I'd also like to encourage you to head on over to my channel where you can follow me over there on Google+. I'm only on YouTube and Google+. And over there, I like to share a lot of things that are food related and just other things in general, pictures and that kind of thing, and especially anything that has to do with my garden. So uh, feel free to follow me over there. And thanks so much for watching. Y'all have a beautiful day. Mm -hmm.